What's going on, guys? My name is Cody, and I'm a graphic designer. And today, we're going to talk about Snapchat filters, specifically how you would make a custom Snapchat filter in Illustrator. A few months ago, my friends Courtney and Christian got married, and they had asked me to design them a Snapchat filter. So I'm just going to use that as like my template and kind of show you guys how you can very quickly design a uh, Snapchat filter in Illustrator. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing you want to do is go to snapchat.com. I've got it pulled up right here, and you can see we're on their homepage, just a big uh, yellow screen with the little Snapchat ghost. Um, you're going to click on Geo Filters. So once that loads, oh, we got a nice little uh, hero image here. Last time I was on this site, it wasn't like this. Anyways, you're going to click down on G Create Your Geo Filter, and it just anchors us down the page. Um, you've got some different options here, so you can do a community kind of event, Snapchat filter, a personal Snapchat filter, or a business one. Now, we're not any of these two on the sides. We're the middle one. We're personal. So we'll go ahead and click that. Let this load here. And you have some different options. You can either upload your own design, which we'll do, or you can design your own online, which, you know, you can definitely go this route if you don't want to make your own graphics, if you kind of just want to use like the pre-programmed kind of templates that they have here which are pretty cool, you know, but we want to have our own custom filters. So, you know, something that nobody else is going to have because we, you know, designed it ourselves. So it'll be unique and more memorable, I think, that way. So um, this is where you would upload that. But I think we need to come down to the bottom here where it says uh, submission guidelines. They kind of have it hidden down here. I don't know why it's so faint, but if it were up to me, I'd probably move it up here. Um, anyways, we're going to click submission guidelines because Snapchat has a lot of rules and kind of guidelines that they want you to follow if you're going to be, you know, making your own filter. Which is, it makes sense, you know, they don't want you putting like, you know, crazy stuff on here. You know, it says like, no drug related content, no more than two lines with non-stylist. That one's kind of weird to me. Um, no gambling or lotteries. So they don't want you using it for some like tomfoolery and some weird stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing that I got out of this though is that, you know, be creative and make it visually compelling. Make something that Snapchat users will want to send to their friends. So I think that's the kind of big thing to keep in mind when you're designing this is, you know, what's what's going to be that one graphic or element that, you know, the people at your party or event are going to want to share, you know? So that's that's kind of like some common knowledge, I think. But um, I would definitely recommend that you read through this though because there's a lot of things that you need to consider before you uh, actually upload your design so that it doesn't get rejected. But for the most part, as long as you're not making something that's malicious or kind of dirty or violent or something like that, you're probably okay. Um, and I think the other big thing is they want you not covering up the whole screen with, with your graphics. So I kind of keep it to like a 20% rule. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into Illustrator and start designing. So I'm gonna start with a document at a width of 1080 and a height by 1920. This is like our portrait kind of Snapchat mode. It essentially resembles a, a ratio of like a screen size for your iPhone or maybe like an Android device. So this is where our kind of picture or video will kind of lie. And then down here is where our filter is gonna be. Um, I'm deciding to make mine down here just because I want most of the couple to be visible since I'm gonna do a wedding um, Snapchat filter. It'll actually be kind of helpful if we put an image in here as a placeholder to kind of give us an idea of you know, what this filter will look like and, and the final result of it. So let's go ahead and hop into the Google and let's type in wedding couple. And just find an image that'll work for now. I know it's not gonna be the actual final output, but um, let's just find something that's in our orientation. Um, maybe these guys, they're number one on Google. Best 25 plus wedding couple ideas. Well, now they're on my YouTube video, so let's go. Let's just plop them in here. I don't know these people, but look like they're have, having a lovely time. They're madly in love. Let's just position them kind of in the middle. Maybe, yeah, like right there. Now this is just gonna show us like kind of a framing of, of maybe a picture somebody would take on Snapchat and then our text could live down here with our illustration. Uh, so for Courtney and Christian's wedding, they, had, they got married in Fallbrook and there's a lot of mountains and kind of trees in that area. So I made my filter have to do with those elements um, as well as some nice kind of scripty font. So I'm just gonna recreate what I did for them on their filter um, and kind of speed this up so you can see what's going on.
All right, so I've basically laid everything out the way I like it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my opacity back up on my reference image. I think I locked it. So we're gonna unlock all. Let's just bring this bad boy up. And right now I designed in black just so I could see it on top of this image. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of my artwork, control, let's see, control A. And I'm gonna shift click select on the background so I'm not selecting that. I'm gonna object group this. I'm gonna copy it and just delete it because I don't want it there on this layer. I should have made it on another layer, but I forgot. Um, so I'm gonna put on layer two, edit, paste in place. And I will lock my reference one more time. Let's see, object, lock selection. Let's just call this artwork so we don't forget. I recommend that you save us a separate version of this just in case you need to make any like edits to it. Like maybe they don't like the way the lines are designed or maybe this text needs to be revised. But once you've got it ready to go, I'm just going to go to object. Uh, let's see, expand, object fill and stroke. Okay. And now I have this all kind of as a path. So I can even combine this as well. So unite there. Now it's all one graphic. I'm going to make it white, hundred percent white. Cool. Now see, it's starting to look cool, but we still have some stuff going on because like all these flowers and the white, it just, it's not super legible. Let's see, unlock it real quick. Object unlock. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna go to Photoshop and I already have this set the same size. Paste it in. Now the reason I'm going to Photoshop is because I think it handles saving out files a little bit easier than Illustrator. And also I think it handles gradients a little bit better. And so we're gonna make a gradient in this file. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And then let's just make a new layer. Let's just make a black square, black rectangle, 100% black. Let's just overlay this on top. Now the reason why we're doing this is so that our, our graphic can lay on top of this and be a little bit more legible so that no matter what image is behind, we have a little bit of like a dark overlay kind of helping it out. So I'm gonna make a gradient mask here, or sorry, just a regular mask. And I'm gonna get my gradient tool and just drag down. See how it's just subtle? And you'll probably have to like play around with this till you get something that you like, but I think I might even go a little bit darker just to be safe. Maybe like a 60%. And I'll just keep playing with this gradient until it's not too obtrusive, but let's get our graphics. So let's go, let's turn these off. Let's just grab all of our artwork here. And let's just paste it in as a smart object so that if we, if we end up needing to change this later, we can just double click this and it'll open it up in Illustrator for us and we can make any changes that we need to. But for now, we're cool with it. So we're just gonna move it down at the bottom. I'm just kind of holding shift as we do this. And look at, there it is. We've got this sweet Snapchat filter. This is not Courtney and Christian, but Courtney and Christian are also very beautiful. Once you have this filter kind of to your liking, just turn off that image and we only want, we don't want a background. We're gonna go ahead and delete that. We only want the black overlay and we want this graphic here. So that's what you're gonna submit. We're gonna save this as a PNG. So export, save for web. Saving for web will kind of condense it and kind of keep it a um, smaller file size. We're gonna go to PNG, 1080 by 1920, 100%, 100%. And we're just gonna save that. Once you have your Snapchat filter ready and you've got it saved out as a PNG with a transparent background, we're gonna go back to Snapchat and we're gonna upload this file. So let's go to uh, filter, do, 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 upload this. And there you go, you're gonna be able to preview it in there. Once you've got your filter looking good within this phone, this little preview here, you're gonna go to next. Now we're gonna select when this is gonna run. So let's just pretend uh, March 15th is gonna be the wedding. Um, and we only want it for a day. So we're just gonna put, let's see, let's do uh, 5 p.m. to, let's say 8 p.m., so three hours. So you'll get presented this map right here where you can draw like a geo fence of where you're uh, where your filter is gonna run and for how long. So we've got it set from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Let's just draw it in some random area. So let's click draw fence and just click point by point and just kind of select a random spot here. Depending on how big you draw it is how much more you're gonna pay. So for this square footage, $146 for three hours. Now what's cool about the feature here is you can start bringing your fence in. And Snapchat will update how much it's gonna save you. So. Just from doing, like we saved like what, 30 bucks there? 
So if say maybe you're on a budget, you only want to spend like 50 bucks. The wedding's probably not acres or miles, so let's just kind of bring it in closer. There you go, 75 bucks and you have a nice little area for your Snapchat filter to run. Anybody that's in this area around that time will have access to your Snapchat filter. So that's people at the event, that's people that are driving by, anybody that's within this fence area, they're gonna have access to this filter. That's pretty cool, right? Once you've drawn that fence and clicked next, you'll be given an order summary page where you can kind of see your details, when you're gonna run it, the area covered, and how much it's gonna cost. You have to accept some kind of legal stuff and then they'll get back to you usually within like a day or two and let you know if you're approved or not. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and I will bring you more videos.